uh, thing towards this uh, beautiful puja this morning. But uh, I have a special message this morning to uh, four people that I know for sure this morning who are in the there are celebrating their birthday. And uh, number one would be uh, BJ and BJ, two BJs here this morning celebrating their birthday along with one BJ daughter here this morning. Jenny, she's uh, next to her dad this morning and uh, it is a lovely scene to see a father and daughter sitting down this morning to make puja Bhagavan on this special occasion. I uh, want to say a special uh, happy birthday to the three of them and I also have my friend uh, Heidi Tony there, uh, Ganesh. His birthday was uh, a few days ago. I want to also include him this morning on this beautiful day that we are here this morning. Bhagavan Sri Ramchandra speaks in the Ram Charit Manas in, uh, to his people. It is called the, the Ram Geet, so to speak. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Sri Krishna speaks to Arjuna. In the Bhagavad Gita, in each chapters and speak to him and all the things that we hear and being taught of, of uh, life. But when it comes to, to birthday time, I always remember this one position that Guan Shri Ramchand speak to his people in, uh, to the people directly. This comes from his lips and not from those Swami Tulsidas who writes Ramchand Manas and the Tulsi Kutramayana. And beautiful, he says, Hare Bhagya Manushatana Bhava Surahu Sabatantana Gava Sadhana Thama Karam Shadwara Paina Jehi Paralok Sawara. And as I picked up a little book this morning that my guru uh, written for me and for all of us. I happen to turn this page and look at this quotation here and uh, uh, I said to myself it is a reminder to all of us when this day comes to us that we celebrate a special day that is given to us we must understand that Bhagavan Ram says to us Hare Bhagya with so much a good fortune that you have done such good only because of the good deeds that you have done from your past life that you are blessed with this human body. He says even the devatas that we are praying to, these devatas that we do worship to, day and night, they themselves are praying when the time will come that they can have this body that the human have. Because it's only this body can take us to Paramatma and no other body else. None of the bodies that are created in the universe can take to God or to that white one flow, but the human body. So the devotees are even jealous of us, of mankind. Because what happened? If this human body that we have is only given to us for a certain time. And if we use it effectively and do the right thing with it, only then we'll have the fruit that this body can make us have to go toward our next step in life. If we do not use it wisely, then remember that all these creatures, eight, the four million species that are in here, the trees, the animal, the flying, the insect, all of these we have to go through before again, the time will be right to get this body again. So it's up to us what we want. You see the devotees, they cannot leave their body. Look at the sun. Night and day the sun shines 24 hours. We have darkness because of the changes of the sun. But the sun still is up there. It cannot finish. And it will never finish. But this body will finish. So the sun is even jealous of us. That oh, human, they have this body. He can do all these things. And then he can leave this body and go and reach Bhagwan. They would not have the opportunity to do the same as we can do. So look at the fortunate ways we have. How lucky we are when Bhagwan Sri Ram Chan write in this Ramayana to tell us these few verses only, these two lines, Hare Bhagya Manushatana Pava Suralu Sarvakantana Gava. Sadhana Thama Bhutsikarara. You can go everywhere with this body. You think the sun can go everywhere? You think the moon can go everywhere? They only can go as far as they can go. But with this body here, we can take a jet plane and we can fly across this country from one end to the other quickly as we wish to do. Only because we have this sense and then this understanding 
Can a dog do the same thing that we can do? No. You look at the example and you will see and analyze the facts and see what I'm saying if it's true. And uh, let me close this morning by saying to all of us here a beautiful quotation. And a reference has made that uh, there's three kinds of human being or three kinds of man in this world. And a quotation is made here. Sansara Mahapurush Trivit Patal Rasal Panasaman Ekasamuk Prat Ekasaman Hal Ek Halai Kewal Lami. There are in this world three types of men. Those resembling one is the rose. The writer tried to make an analogy here and says to us that if you look at a rose tree, the rose only blossom. Look at any flower tree, the flower tree will only give flowers. And look at a mango tree, the mango tree will give flowers and also it will give fruit. And there's a third tree. Look at the breadfruit tree. Those of us who are born in Guyana and Trinidad will know what I'm talking about breadfruit. The little children might not understand this. But breadfruit bears without flower, without bloom. It all, all of a sudden, the fruit will appear from the stem of that tree. So too, there are three types of man in this world. One that likes to talk only. Just like the tree that only gives flower. The second is the mango tree, which gives flower, but also gives the fruit. And the second type of human being in this world will be the one who would like to talk and also do a little bit too. This is the person who would like to talk and do, but would like to talk what he should have done, to be proud of what he has done, all the great things he has done. And the third one will not talk, he will just do without talking. So these are the three types of human beings in this world. We must ask ourselves, among ourselves here, which one are we? Are we the one that just talk? Are we the one that just talk and do, or do and talk? Or are we the one who will just do and uh, accept what we have done, we have done, and do not be proud and brag and boast, so to speak, of what we have done and accomplished in this world. Let us take this lesson today, and while we're going home, ask ourselves which one of these we want to be in this world, and then come back to this understanding, Hare Bhagya Manushyatana Bhava, how lucky we are, firstly, to get his body, and now what will we do with his body, how will we act, and take analysis from these three examples that I have given, and do what you can do for yourself. You know, as I keep on talking, things come into my head, and we go to sermon, we go to mandir, we go to church, or wherever we go to, and we'll hear lectures after lectures, talking after talking, and people will sit down and listen, and when they leave here, they'll gone, and they'll forget what has been said. This also needs to be understanding. An old man used to tell me or say a little joke, and uh, I will end my little serious talking this morning with a little joke. In Guyana and Trinidad, there's a marketplace that we all go, we know, they're shopping, you walk around and you see little things selling all over the place. And uh, one lady was selling and she had two beautiful dolls on the ground. Exactly identically dressed and look alike, like a twin. The customer comes up and says, what is the price for this one? He says, five dollars. And what about the other one? He said, that's ten dollars. The customer says, this cannot be fair. The two dolls dress the same dress, they look alike, 
And they are the same. Why you change the price? Huh? Why is the price one higher than the other? The lady says, you will not understand why the price is different. So let me tell you what makes the difference in these dolls. Says one of these doll, if you take water and throw it into one ears, the water will come out on the other ears. And that is five dollars. He said, this other one, when you throw the water into one ears, it will stay in the head, it will not fall off on the other side, and that is ten dollars. Which doll we want to be and which one do I? Follow us here, but we are on the ten to be. Yeah.